I'm Andrew Dom. I'm a food scientist at the University of Sydney. Um, and our study is the investigation of the unique antimicrobial properties of the honey pot ant honey. Um, so in the study, we've gathered uh, these ants from their uh, ant nest. And basically, we've dissected the ants to gather the honey that is stored within them. And we've tested them against a suite of uh, pathogens, as well as a microbiome assay to assess the antimicrobial properties of the honey. No, so I'm really passionate um, and had a long-standing interest with indigenous foods or uh, also known as bush tucker. And the honeypot ant is or just one of those that just really struck a chord with me. I've been tracking down or I've been wanting to track down these ants for, for more than five years now and to do a project on them to just investigate its qualities. Um, they are extremely rare you have to they're only found in certain parts of um, australia exclusively in dried and arid desert areas i was lucky enough to um, go to kalgoorlie um, in western australia so there's a language group an indigenous language group um, the juban people um, which i worked with who helped me track down the um the honey ants it is a food source that is culturally and socially significant for the indigenous people there, um, which just added uh, an extra layer of interest for me. So it's, it involves basically looking for the right species of ant, um, tracking it to its nest, and then obviously excavating part of the nest um, to find the replates, which are the, the swollen ants with the nectar that they have engorged inside. So Andrew got in touch with me, it was a few years ago now, um, because my lab has been interested in honey for actually quite a long time. We've had an ongoing interest in honeybee honey um, and its medicinal properties, particularly manuka honey, but also non-manuka honeys that are, that are sourced from around Australia. Um, and we've also recently become very interested in stingless bee honeys produced by native Australian bees. I have to admit, I had never heard of these ants. And when Andrew showed me a picture of them, um, and it's really interesting the way that these ants collect their honey, because in the nest, some of the ants have designated these, what they call repletes, where they are the storage of honey for the entire colony. And they get fed honey from the other ants, and then they get, they swell up, they get bigger and bigger to the point where they can't really move. And they just hang off the ceiling of their uh, little nest area. So it's an amazing process that I, hadn't, I knew nothing about. Um, and I wasn't really aware that different organisms like an ant would make honey. So it was really unusual to me and exciting to be able to, to test this out. And I was thrilled when Andrew finally was able to get his hands on the ant, ants and their honey and bring them to the lab for testing. Uh, so the first thing we did was we did some antimicrobial susceptibility testing using the ant honey against a variety of different bacterial and fungal pathogens. And we found that it had some really unique activity. So it was totally inactive against some of the things we looked at, but it was really strongly active against others, uh, such as Staphylococcus aureus. Um, and in some cases, the ant honey was even um, outperforming therapeutic grade bee honey. Uh, we also looked at some various chemical properties of the ant honey and we compared this to bee honeys. So we found that the ant honey had a much higher moisture content, it had a lower sugar content, and it also had a higher water activity um, than your typical bee honey. And finally, we looked at the microbiome of the honeypot ant bodies. The most surprising and probably the biggest impact would be that the honey had some really specific activity. So that it was really active against some things, but totally inactive against other things. That really suggests that there is um, a specific compound in there and probably one that is very unique from something else that might be found in any other type of um, bee honey that's been looked at before that's giving it its um, specific power against certain microbes. To me, this just shows the power of natural products products that have been evolving in the environment by animals and other creatures for millions of years um, and that we can then hopefully use uh, to make something that's useful for ourselves. So even if we can't directly use the honey, we can use our knowledge about what's, what is in the honey that is killing these pathogenic organisms to potentially come up with new ways of treatment.